Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to a special edition of our show. Today is all about me. Okay, we've gotten numerous requests over the last couple of weeks. Pete, what are your favorite albums of all time? All right, Pete, can you do a top 10 list of the albums that you reach for the most in your life? What are your favorite albums? So I said, all right, we have enough people asking because all of a sudden we got a flurry of activity with people asking that because we're talking about all these classic albums and classic live albums in recent weeks. So what is Pete really like? What's Pete's favorites? So I've attempted to put to initially it was going to be in my 10 favorite albums of all time. Then all of a sudden I had five honorable mentions and then I said, fuck it, let's just do a top 20. All right, so that's what you're going to get. Uh, these are not in any order. I just I have a stack here. I'm just going to kind of go through them, all right? Not in any order. I think trying to put these in some kind of priority or order of favorites would be a test that I don't think I would want to tackle right now. But just so you know which are the 20 albums that are among my favorite of all time. Now, remember, this is studio albums, okay? What I'm going to do, and I planned this all along, is that at the end of our Classic Live Album War contest, when we've crowned your favorite live album of all time, I'm actually going to give you my top 20. I'm not always going to do 10, but I might as well give you 20. My top 20 favorite albums of all time. Okay, so that's uh, favorite live albums of all time. Sorry. So that's what I'm going to do. After you guys have crowned your favorite live album of all time, I'm going to give you my list of my favorite uh, 20. All right. And um, that should be kind of fun. So I, I pretty much already know what they are, but... Uh, It'll, it'll, when you get down to the nitty gritty, it'll be kind of difficult. But anyway, here are my top 20 favorite albums of all time. You know, some might change here or there, given any you know particular week or what have you. But I feel pretty strongly about these. Uh, again, just strictly studio albums. And again, these are mine. All right, these are my favorites. If all you know, for some of you are gonna be like, oh my god, I can't believe he didn't put a Beatles album on there or whatever. You know, these are my favorites. All right, just for once. Stop thinking about what your favorites are, all right? You ask me what mine are, here they are, all right? So again, in no particular order, Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind. I dig a lot of the Iron Maiden catalog, a lot, okay? I grew up with Iron Maiden, all right? I love the first album. I love Killers. Number of the Beast is pretty special to me. Power Slave, all right? Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, all right? Somewhere in Time, a lot of the later albums. I like a lot of the more recent ones, too. But one album always really, really kind of clicked with me more than the others, and that's this one, you know, Where Eagles Dare, Revelation, Relations, I should say, Die With Your Boots on the Trooper, Quest for Fire, To Tame a Land, Flight of Icarus, doesn't get much better than that, so that's definitely on my list. Next up, one I almost forgot about that, I was kind of looking over my shelves over there, I'm like, oh my god, gotta have this one on there. Sabotage. Hall of the Mountain King. I was hugely, hugely into this album when it came out, and I still I listen to it to this day, and it's just like brings back great memories. It just sends chills up and down my spine. You you know, an album or songs really are hitting home when you listen to them for like the two hundredth time, and and it it just kind of grips you just like it did back in you know. 30 some odd years ago when you've heard it for the first time uh you know the title track beyond the doors of the dark legion strange strange wings white witch last dawn devastation oh my god the oliva brothers classic classic gotta have moving pictures on here all right you know there may be other rush albums that i listen to more nowadays specifically the ones that preceded this but this was the album that completely, I mean, I was listening to Rush before this came out, but this was the album that kind of did it all for me. I mean, this is pretty much a perfect album. And like I said, I've heard it to death in my lifetime, but I still do love it a lot. And it's, it, it's one of the most important albums to me as we kind of started off into the 80s, right? And uh, I just, man, this was such a part of my youth that it's got to be in this list, right? Besides the fact that I really don't need to ever hear Tom Sawyer again, I can still listen to the rest of this album without a problem. You know, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Limelight, Camera Eye, My Favorite Witch Hunt, even Vital Signs. You know, Vital Signs, I never liked that much when I was younger, but I dig it a lot more now. Great, great album, great production, everything about it is great. Uh, gotta have this on here. All right, I love, as you all know, I love White Snake a lot. I love all eras of White Snake. I toyed with putting 
um, slide it in on here, but when it comes down to it, this has always been my favorite White Snake album. I know a lot of you are saying, "Oh, Pete, that's when White Snake started to become more metallic and all that kind of stuff." And I prefer the the bluesy early White Snake. You know what? I love that White Snake too, but this album to me is really special. Coverdale and Sykes together equals gold. Some of my favorite White Snake tunes are on this. You know, Crying in the Rain on this album just absolutely slays. Bad Boys is great. Still the Night is my favorite song of all time. Uh, you know, here I you know, here I go again and uh, is this love is this love I could do with that? Here I go again. I've always dug as a tune. It's overplayed, sure. Uh, Give me all your love is great. Children of the night, straight for the heart, and don't turn away all great songs. Great, great songs, great guitar playing, great vocals, White Snake at their absolute peak. All right, so I had like three King Crimson, whoops, I had like three King Crimson albums or CDs in my hand because I just, there's a, I just love so many King Crimson records, albums, CDs, whatever you want to call it, to death. And I was like, well, I, I only got I can only pick one. I knew King Crimson had to be on this list. And when it comes down to it, I have to pick the one. It was either this or Lark's Tongues and Aspic. And I decided to go with Red because, you know, because it's got Red and it's got Starless on it, which bookends the album. And right there, you have two of the greatest King Crimson songs ever. Uh, the rest of it ain't half bad either. Providence, right? Fallen Angel, One More Red Nightmare. It's just, it's a great album. And, uh, it's really special to me, as is King Crimson in general. All right, got to have Kansas here. I went with Left Overture. Another perfect album. You know, Questions of My Childhood, Magnum Opus, Carry On Wayward Son, The Wall. I mean, so many great tunes. Uh, Kansas, again, at their peak. You know, Kansas's first album all the way through Monolith, in my opinion, Untouchable. Love them all, but this one kind of rises over the top a little bit. <sighs> Gotta have Priest here. Stay in class. Always my favorite Priest album. Love it to death. The more, you know, it's no matter how many times you hear it, it still just absolutely slays. Uh, come on, Exciter. Better by you, better than me. Stay in class. Invaders. Or Invaders, sorry. Think about the Iron Maiden song. Saints in Hell. My favorite Priest song of all time. Savage. Beyond the Realms of Death. Heroes in, I mean, come on. The, you know, one of the, what's the word I'm looking for? We, we talk so many times on this channel about the birth of heavy metal, and I know we go back to, you know, the days of, uh, initial days of Sabbath and Zeppelin and Purple and Heap and Cream and Hendrix and all that kind of stuff, Blue Cheer and what have you, but heavy metal as we knew it, leather and chains and studs and motorcycles and dark and just crunchy and all that kind of stuff it's judas priest guys and specifically those early albums you know their second third fourth fifth and on right that's is what it is love this album love it love it love it uh jethro tell's got to be on this list and I, I love a lot of jethro tell albums right i could have picked thick as a brick could have picked aqualung could have picked minstrel in the gallery those are some of my favorites but uh when it comes right down to it the album that i've always liked the most it's their riffiest album, in my opinion. It's got a good mix of hard rock and blues and folk and prog all mixed into one. It's got to be Benefit. I just love this album. With you there to help me, nothing to say, to cry you a song. So many great tunes. Sun, I mean, I just love it. Every tune is just amazing. Uh, I know every tune backwards, forwards, and just it's just part of my psyche. Love Tall to death. All right. For this band, it was either one album or the other. I went with this one because I think if you were to ask me 30 years ago, I would have went with the other. But I think as I've gotten older, I this one has just risen above the other one just a little bit. I love them both to death, though. We're talking about Sticks, Grand Illusion. It was either this or Pieces of Eight. I love them both to death. But I, in recent years, I've just grown to appreciate the grand illusion for its just magnificence a little bit more title track is killer fooling yourself the angry young man amazing tommy shaw at his best uh superstars come sail away miss america man in the wilderness i love that tune castle walls castle walls is one of their best songs they ever did uh man what a prog rock classic and the grand finale i just love the bombastic nature of this album the great song craft the great playing the vocals just amazing 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 
All right. Well, you know, it's uh, always going to be tough for me when you look at your like top favorite bands to pick one uh, because I, I purposefully did not want to pick any band twice in this list. I could have easily done it. You would have then you would have seen like half the list filled with uh, Purple, Sabbath, White Snake, Uriah Heap albums and all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to pick just one from each band that I really liked. Uh, so when it came to Sabbath, not really a hard choice, although I feel bad about the other couple that aren't going to make it. But in the end, for me, it's always been volume four. Uh, just something about this album has always really clicked with me. And, I, you know, the first Sabbath album I really got into, if you were to ask me this question in the early 80s, I would have said Paranoid all the way. But, you know, over the years, I'm like, God, how many times have I heard Paranoid? And But shortly after I got this, I started to really appreciate the moodiness of this album. It's just different, right? Wheels of Confusion, Tomorrow's Dream, Forget Changes, uh, Supernaut, Snowblind, my favorite Sabbath song, right? Cornucopia, Laguna Sunrise, St. Vitus's Dance, Under the Sun. How heavy is that? I just I just love the just doomy nature of this album. And, gra and granted, there's other, you know, Master Reality is great. First album is great. Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath is great. Of course, Paranoid's great. You know, Sabotage. And of course, and Heaven and Hell, right? Heaven and Hell would have probably would have been my other pick for this list. But I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Not going to do it today. Got to have this behemoth on here. One of my favorite double albums of all time. Chicago Transit Authority debut. <sighs> Another one of those albums that since the first time I heard it, I always loved it. And the older I get, the more I appreciate this. Terry freaking Kath, ladies and gentlemen. One of the best guitar performances ever on this album. Okay? Great tunes. Uh, if, if all you know of Chicago is that sappy 80s stuff, man, forget it. This is a different beast altogether. All right? Introduction. Does anybody really know what time it is? Beginnings, great tune. Question 67, 68, majestic. Listen. Dun 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 dun. Poem 58, freeform guitar. South California Purples. I mean, come on, all these tunes just amazing. I'm a man. Best version of I'm a man ever. Love it. Uh, prologue, someday, and liberation. Just all these great extended tunes. You got pop on here. You got hard rock. You got psychedelia. You got a little bit of prog. You got jazz, blues, everything. Whoops, as it goes flying out of its little case here. Uh, a, a landmark album and one of the greatest debuts of all time. Love it. Love it. <sighs> Secret Treaties, Blue Oyster Cult. Doesn't get much better than this. All right. Career of Evil, Subhuman, Dominance and Submission, ME262, Harvester of Eyes, Flaming Telepaths and Astronomy. I mean, come on, I know I didn't mention a couple others, but just those tunes alone, right? It's the best Blue Oyster Cult album ever. It's one of the best hard rock albums ever, all right? You don't believe me, just go listen to it, all right? Uh, I had to throw some Gentle Giant in here because I love them to death. Uh, I love Octopus. I love In a Glass House. I love Freehand. Uh, I love so many of their albums, but I always go back to the first album I ever bought from this band, and that was Three Friends. It's just so different, okay? It's kind of warm and inviting. Not the longest album on the planet, obviously, but just some great stuff on here. Prologue, School Days, Working All Day Here. Peel the Paint, love Peel the Paint. Blistering Hard Rock from the Giant. Uh, Mr. Class and Quality, and then the title track, Three Friends. Just such a amazing band, so different virtuoso it's so hard to describe right they're prog rock but they do a little all sorts of weird stuff you know madrigal and renaissance type music and classical and little bits of jazz and blues and hard rock and psh, great stuff great stuff uh my beloved genesis from the uh, gabriel era uh again god you can pick any of them right nursery crime the lamb selling England by the pound but when it comes down to it for me it's always going to be foxtrot because, quite frankly, any album that has Watcher of the Skies, Get Him Out by Friday, and Supper's Ready, and even all the other tunes on here, if it's got those tunes, it's a winner for me. Love this to death. Uh, probably, probably my favorite progressive rock album of all time. Kind of probably tied with this one. All right. My, my two favorite prog rock albums of all time. Uh, Close to the Edge. I mean, come on. Siberian Katru, the title track, and then you and I. Three epic tunes, absolute perfection, a band at their peak. Love it. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mentioned before Chicago Transit Authority, probably my favorite double album of all time, studio album anyway. This is right up there too. This is for me, and you know Zeppelin has so many great albums, all of them great. You know, uh, you know, say what you want about Into the Outdoor and Coda, right? The stuff, you know, and Into the Outdoor is good for what it is, I guess. And Coda's got a couple of good tracks on it, but all their other albums are fantastic, right? Uh, you know, the first album, the second album, I love the third album. You know, the fourth album, obviously, Houses of the Holy, all this, all these great, great albums. But for me, this is just epic Zeppelin. The, he the heavy thunders on here, the blues is on here. You got some pop on here. You got some folk on here. A little bit of everything here for for every flavor of Zeppelin you might have or like. This has got it all. Love this to death, people. All right, the next one on my list I'm going to save for last. Actually, the next the top two. All right, next up, got to throw these guys on my list, right? Ironically, I'm not going to pick this album. Although Lights Out is probably my second favorite UFO album of all time, studio album. Since I first got it, my favorite studio album by them has always been Obsession. I like it just a little bit better. You know what it is? It's like there's probably stronger overall tunes on Lights Out, but a couple of the other tunes, a couple of the deep cuts on Lights Out... I'm okay with, I'm not crazy about, whereas I think that overall, top to bottom, this is a little stronger of an album. Uh, you know, Only You Can Rock Me, Pack It Up and Go, for Christ's sakes, my second favorite UFO song of all time. Uh, Arbery Hill, Ain't No Baby, I love Ain't No Baby, Heavy, Looking Out for Number One, Great Hooks in That, Hot and Ready, Ready to Use, Cherry, another really good kind of pop rocker, right? Uh, you Don't Fool Me, Sledgehammer riffing on there, Looking Out for Number One Reprise, and One More for The Rodeo, another heavy grinding tune, stinging Shanker guitar and Born to Lose. I just, I love the production of this album. Uh, I love the hooks. Uh, Shanker's guitar playing, for my money, probably his best lead guitar work on any studio album he's ever done right here. At least his UFO, you know, a couple of the uh, MSG albums. Probably rival it, but as far as like UFO studio albums, I think his best lead guitar work is on this particular album right here. Love it, love it, love it. Another album I love. Again, could have picked any number of their albums, right? Because I dig them all so much. But when it comes down to it, I always kind of reach for this one. A little bit above Demons and Wizards. Okay, Uriah Heap, Look at Yourself. The title track just absolutely kills me. I Want to Be Free. The Wonderful July Morning. Tears in My Eyes. The Amazing Shadows of Grief. An unsung song from this band. Man, I love Shadows of Grief. Uh, what Should Be Done and the heavy boogie of Love Machine. All right. Great, great stuff. Love it. All right. These two I kind of save for last for a reason because they're right at the top of my list of favorites all time. Again, um, either one could be my number one. All right. These are both definitely top three if I had to put these in some order, which would be near impossible. But uh, let's talk about this one first. <sighs> probably the one album that I own that when I play it today or last month or last year or two, three years ago uh, brings me to tears because it's just, to me, it's Ronnie James Dio's best vocal performance ever on any album. And uh, it's just such a perfect album. I mean, this album, you know, Richie Blackmore and Company, basically the seeds of like power metal and progressive metal are right here, folks. All right. <clears throat> just uh, Tarot Woman, Run With The Wolf, Starstruck, Do You Close Your Eyes. Right there, side one of the vinyl. That's strong as it is, but then you, you finish it off on side two with Stargazer and Light in the Black. Ugh, Cozy Powell. Jesus, you know, it's just, uh, and Dio's vocal performance, Blackmore's guitar, Tony Carey, Jimmy Bain. Ugh, an amazing, amazing album. Doesn't get much better than this. Or maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> Deep Purple in Rock, people. Um, you know, I just... Uh, God. Speed King, Child in Time, Bloodsucker. Uh, you know, so many great, great tracks on here. Um, uh, I just love it. Ian Gillen at the height of his powers. You know, screaming up a storm. Uh, just so many, so many great, great tunes on here. Blackmore's blistering heavy riffs. John Lord's, you know, distorted fuzzy organ, uh, Ian Pace, Roger Glover, just so many great, great tracks on here, top to bottom, you know, 
heavy, rampage in Deep Purple at their finest. All right. It's one of my favorite albums of all time, as is this one. As are all these, right? So uh, there you have it. You wanted it. You asked for it. You got it. You wanted my favorites. You got my favorites. My top 20 in the entire universe. There you have it. So, again, another album or two or three or four might kind of float in and out of this list at any given time. But I went and looked over everything I own and, uh, you know, and look back on the albums that have meant the most to me, at least studio albums, over my life and there's a lot more than this that mean a hell of a lot to me but these are for my money the kind of the cream of the crop you know there's there's uh, there's some jazz fusion stuff that i love to think you know romantic warrior by uh, return to forever uh all those return to forever albums uh, all those mahavishnu albums you know mahavishnu orchestra uh just a bunch of miles davis stuff there's a lot of other prog albums that i just absolutely adore you know robin trower studio albums jimmy hendrix for crying out loud the who the sticky fingers by the stones you know the allman brothers band uh first album you know a lot of really great stuff a lot of really really great albums that i just love opeth many opeth albums uh, metallica you know ride the lightning slayer hell awaits rain and blood the first album you know all sorts of stuff that really has meant a lot to me in my life but these these are the ones that are the top of the list this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube every damn day. Stay tuned. We've got classic live album more stuff coming at you next. Take care. Bye-bye.